Hi, hi, I'm Mike Cerrone, and welcome to our mastermind today. This is our broker owner mastermind. Pretty excited about this call. Uh, just kind of brought this together. I thought there might be some need for it for folks that are getting started with their brokerage and moving along for just a little bit. I also know that we're going to have some people here that uh, have experience and been around for a while. So it should be a really good call. And uh, I can't wait to get everybody introduced and acquainted. Uh, just kind of kind of eat up some time here right at the beginning. I'm, I always mess up and I don't let everybody in. So I'm trying to make sure I'm better at that today. And we get everybody into our call. So uh, it looks like we're starting to get some activity. Perfect. All right. All right. So uh, again, let me tell you this. I sent out uh, an email with our agenda. Let me go through that again real quick so you know what we're going to be doing today. Uh, this, um, again, by the way, let me let me start actually with why I'm doing this. I, I, I want to make sure that uh, the folks that need help uh, either getting their brokerage up and off the ground or moving after they've got it up off the ground, that's my primary focus. But I'm also willing to talk to anybody who's already got a brokerage moving and uh, need some help. My background is, of course, I've been in the industry for 30 years now. It'll be 30 years in July and uh, pretty awesome industry. Love everything about it. Uh, I've been, I had a, uh, a brokerage that I ran for 17 years. So um, I'll, I'll try to help out any way that I can. Yeah, but we're doing this in a mastermind format where I want everybody to participate. The goal here is to have everybody participate and help out. If you've got an idea that can help one of your fellow brokers, uh, that is what we're here for. Pretty excited about it. So let me go through our agenda and our focus. We're going to have three rounds. We're going to have three rounds that we're going to go through. The first round is an introduction where we're going to get to know you uh, just really quick, you know, like a, a 30, 60 second kind of thing, just so everybody kind of gets an idea of where you're coming from. Uh, so you're going to tell us your name and your brokerage name, uh, where you're located, your years of owning a brokerage, uh, how many agents you have or any other stats that you want to throw out there, just so people kind of get an idea of where you're coming from. Uh, and then round two, we're going to go into the biggest success. What has been your biz biggest success as a broker that you've brought, been able to act on uh, and get going as you've been uh, getting your brokerage going? And then uh, third, round three, I think is going to have the most fruit, and I'm real excited about that as well. And that is we're going to talk about the biggest problem or challenge that you're having. And we're going to ask the group, hey, do you have any ideas uh, on this topic. So when we get there, be real specific about your idea, okay? So try to just knock it down to 30, uh, excuse me, 60, 90 seconds, really nail what you're looking for so we can jump in and work on it for a couple of minutes and see if we can't hammer out some solutions uh, to help you get to that next step. All right, that's the big idea. Let me go ahead and change my view now to gallery. So everybody, everybody can see each other. And thank you so much for showing your faces today. That's fantastic. Uh, what we're going to do, by the way, let me give another couple little etiquette things. So please mute yourself when you're not talking. That way everybody can hear. There's no feedback or static. And um, when you are talking, though, just go ahead and hit unmute and chat and tell us what's going on. Uh, and then when you're done, please click the mute again. And, uh, and we'll get everybody to be chatting and talking and getting us some help here. All right, so let's do this. Let's get into round one, broker introductions. Um, and uh, I'll just go ahead and start. As I said, my name is Mike Cerrone. Um, and the brokerage that I ran was right here in uh, Colorado. Uh, we call it Royal. Uh, it was a really cool little company. I uh, did that for 17 years. Um, some stats. Uh, I ran it as a small team, okay, for the majority of the brokerage. And so I think we got up to probably five to seven people on that team, depending on when you looked at it. Uh, I did a couple of other experiments where I had some different models where I actually leveraged out to maybe 20 to 30 different agents uh, running on, a, on a, a loose model. Uh, I didn't like that as well. I really like the team model is better, but um, I can give you a lot of insight into that. Uh, and that that kind of gives you some, some insight. Let's now go to... Who wants to chat next? Let's talk with, I'm going to go down my screen if it's okay. And I, that way I get everybody. Tristan, 
could you uh, unmute yourself and tell us, of course, I think you're driving. Be careful there. Maybe I should wait. Uh, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Tristan. Here. Tell us tell us about yourself, your your name, brokerage, location, years of owning the brokerage, and any stats. Uh, my name is Tristan Scott. My company is called Tristan Scott Real Estate Brokerage. Uh, we're based out of Milton, Ontario. It's about maybe 40 minutes west of Toronto in Canada. Um, I've been owning the brokerage now coming up to one year this March. And I think my greatest accomplishment to this point has been able to, I guess, fire my mom from her previous job and bring her on board with the company. Uh, so she's currently working on getting her license. And um, I'm really excited about that. And uh, thanks, Mike, for putting this uh, meeting together. I'm really excited to learn from all these other agents. Awesome. Excellent job, Tristan. Excellent job. Be sure uh, to meet yourself or I can help since you're driving. Oh, you did you get it? I think you got it. Wow, you're good. Uh, let's go to uh, Tatiana. Did I say that right? Tatiana? Yes, yes, you're right. All right. Hi, Hi how are you? I'm great. Uh, my name is Tatiana Baitler. I am, my uh, company is Lagret Real Estate. It's like Chevrolet Lagret La uh, La Real Estate. Um, and I'm licensed in three states, Washington, D.C., uh, Virginia, and Maryland. And um, I have about six agents right now. I had... Uh, my high peak, uh, uh, like a couple of years ago, I had uh, 16 agents. And uh, sometimes it's like really hard, and we will talk about it, when uh, agents start looking around and uh, asking uh, you to get um, like more discounts. And uh, so it's, it's hard to keep them. Uh, and I, you know, we are in a democracy, so everyone free to go. Um, so I have uh, six agents right now. <clears throat> um, I started my business long time ago in 2006. Uh, and um, I started with Maryland and uh, then uh, I got uh, licensed in Washington, D.C. and Virginia. And um, I live in Maryland, but my agents actually... <laughs> And majority of them in Virginia. So that's cool because all those states kind of come together. So that it overlaps the geography there. That's really cool. Thank you for the introduction. All right. Uh, Corey, I think you're up next. Hey, Mike. Hey, Corey. Uh, hello, everyone else on the call. Um, so my name is Corey Rose. Uh, name of my company is Red Dot Real Estate Inc. Um, we serve like the Jacksonville, Florida area, uh, and the surrounding couple surrounding counties. Um, been in operation about seven months, so I'm pretty new. Um, we got, uh, it's me and my wife right now. I actually had three agents, three other agents, uh, with me, but I decided to off board those agents take a step back so I could set my company up the way I wanted it to run versus what I've kind of seen, you know, so far in the industry. Um, so I kind of went backwards a little bit, but uh, my biggest success, I think so far is the fact that I actually started the brokerage, you know, got it up, licensed the logo, <laughs> you know, the basic things that it takes, you know, to get go things going. And, um, yeah. Awesome. So, Corey, that's, that's fantastic. I can't wait to get your input. I know you got a lot of good stuff. We've chatted before. Uh, thank you so much for being here. All right. So, uh, Corey, go ahead and mute yourself. And then we've got iPhone. I don't know the name there. Uh, ends in 49. <laughs> Oh, yeah, if you could unmute yourself, that'd be great. I, we can't hear you yet. If you can unmute yourself, actually, maybe I can help. Let's see. Uh, oh, I can only say ask to unmute. Okay, uh, my name is Alicia Addison. I'm out hey, of Alicia. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and uh, my brokerage is only two months old. So, um, wow. 
not quite uh, the successes is that um, I'm established. <laughs> <laughs> you made it at this point in time, but um, but I understand that um, you know more successes are to come. So um, the name of the brokerage is Paloma Equities, um, mainly specializing in uh, property management. Um, but my sister and my friend and I, we are looking to also start a brokerage in uh, Illinois, uh, Chicago, Illinois. So that is it. Cool. Welcome. Welcome. That's fantastic, Alicia. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we got Vivica next. Vivica. Hi, everyone. I'm excited about this. Uh, Mike and I have been going back and forth on it, and I'm glad that he invited me. I will not launch until April 1st. Company name is North Carolina Home Link and Associates. Um, success is I am working the foundation so that I don't feel like Corey's feeling, and I'm sure that I will, but I'm getting as much of my foundation in place, logo and the like, and you know, just that transition plan. Um, that's it. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Vivica. Thank you for being here. All right. Uh, Nadja, did I say that right? All right. Unmute yourself, please. Let's see. Uh, maybe I can help. Um, there you go. Did that oh, here we go. Hey, Sorry. I, I'm still getting used to all the Zoom stuff. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Nadja Fawaz, and I am from Michigan. I have been in real estate forever, probably longer than Mike. Woo. I started in 1988, so I think wow. it's about 34 years. Um, I got my broker's license in 1995. However, I opened Platinum Realty in 2003. Um, when I opened, I hired probably around 10 agents because I had a small office. It was going good for a while. And then all of a sudden, like Tatania was saying, um, uh, you know, these agents... Really, they weren't doing anything and they would leave. And I found myself paying all the bills and accomplishing nothing. So after about three or four years of doing this, I, I kicked everyone out, just like Corey. <laughs> <laughs> and what I did is I moved forward and I thought, let me try a new niche. And I went into REO. And I prospected different banks and asset management companies. And I did BPOs and whatnot. So that moved on, you know, and I hired admin assistants. <clears throat> so my office was built with admin assistants. Now, after 2010, there's a lot of things that went on in my personal life. And I'm not going to bore you guys with all that. But it's quite ex extraordinary. And to say the least, it killed my business. And um, so here I am, we're still battling different things in my personal life. Um, however, I want to move on and, and start building an office again. I don't want to build it with agents physically. I have ideas and I want to kind of do more of that home base and I want to be able to charge a monthly fee and I want it to be profitable for me and then also a value for the agent. And I'm not sure how to build. So that's where I'm at. Cool. Welcome. Welcome, Nadja. That's fantastic. Thanks for giving us the lowdown there. And yeah. um, oh, we had somebody and I think they, they dropped off or maybe they had a tech issue. I thought we had another folks uh, joining us. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to mute uh, real quick there so we can stay on track. All right, cool. Let's do this. We Some folks mentioned it, but I'm going to go ahead and go back through round two. Uh, and that's your success round. You know, what was your biggest success? Uh, even if you said it before, go ahead and repeat yourself just because I want to make sure I'm hearing things and it's just kind of the way I operate. So let's go back through the group. Unmute yourself. Tell us your biggest success you've had in uh, getting this brokerage going or where you, what you thought you did. If you've been around a while, what was the biggest success you had? Go ahead, Tristan, you're up. 
Yeah, so I mentioned it before. My biggest success to this point was being able to help my mom leave from her previous job and now start her career there in real estate. And as I mentioned, I'm very excited about that. It's going to give us the opportunity to, you know, work with one another and also for me to help her out. And um, she's excited to start a new career and I'm excited to have her on board along with me on this uh, journey. Yeah, that's awesome. Tristan, you're running uh, kind of a, a small family brokerage operation at this point, right? It's you, your wife and your mom, if I understand. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And then um, there's also a, a boy that... Um, helps me out. He's, he's still in high school at the moment, but uh, he's looking to get his license once he graduates. Yeah. And I got to tell people a little bit about that fellow. He's, he's a prospecting champ, right? He goes around with you door to door and knocks on doors. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Up in cold Canada. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, Tristan, thank you for sharing your success. All right. Uh, Tatiana, go ahead. Okay. Um, I can talk about, um, um, my success uh, a couple of years ago, um, I was um, uh, hired uh, uh, as a small business uh, uh, to represent Fannie Mae, uh, Freddie Mac, and um, all kind of small banks around uh, as a um, listing agent for their uh, foreclosed properties. And it was really great experience i was last la lasted about two years because so many it's a so much competition um and it was like miracle they have chosen my company for two years <laughs> it was um um a lot of um work a lot of inspections a lot of uh showings uh I, I believe uh, we sold uh, probably about 40, 40 or 50 uh, homes uh, one year and about 60, 70 homes in next year. So it was really, really interesting uh, experience. Fantastic. Thank you. That's a, that's a good experience to know, especially as our market changes. I think our or two, I've heard two REO agents, yeah. they may have an advantage moving in. Yeah. Maybe uh, at some point the, the group can lean on you for some information. Oh, sure. That's, that's awesome. I, I noticed not, not, not Nadja, Nadja also had that experience. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tatiana, thank you. Uh, Corey, uh, your biggest success? Uh, <clears throat> okay. I believe my biggest success would be. Um, one is adding uh, adding my wife. She got her license, so we work together as well um, on, with this brokerage. And then I would say my second one is we, we've been able to add like five referral networks um, to our brokerage. And those are networks that doesn't have any upfront costs. You pay when you close. Um so I would say those those two things as far as the brokerage is concerned. Oh, nice. one more thing. Go ahead. And the the uh, I've been able to really have a streamlined contract to close process that's all digital that's in place as well that I'm I'm pretty proud of. That is fantastic. Now. I'm taking notes and I hope everybody else is. I, what I'm identifying is people's strengths, right? That's what I'm looking for right now because maybe down the line, you may want to lean on someone. So for instance, Corey just mentioned he's got a really good streamlined system on his under contract phase. Um, uh, that would be interesting to chat with him about if that's something you're trying to work on. Or maybe uh, two of our REO folks uh, they talked about uh, uh, their ability to do that in this upcoming market. That might be important or valuable to kind of chat with them about that. Um, I had another one and I just dropped it. I'm sorry, but make sure you're taking notes on uh, what everybody is and what their strengths are. Um, I am trying to record this so you'll be able to refer to it, but they don't always work. So <laughs> try to take some notes. And in fact, what I'm going to do, I'll just throw it out real quick. I am going to ask you all exchange information for contact information so you can uh, get back in touch with each other. Uh, Cause I don't know if we'll be doing this again or not. I just want to keep this available so you guys can make some connections. That was my whole goal of doing this. All right, let's go to 
Uh, Corey, thank you so much. Let's go to an iPhone is I think Alicia. Did I get that right? Alicia? Let me see if I can help. I don't know why my phone is not working. Well, not allowing <laughs> did me did to I get your it. name right? Is it Alicia? Alicia. Yes. Oh, that's okay, correct. good. Um, so like I stated in the intro, the biggest um, success is uh, just getting established uh, right now. Um, it wasn't necessarily. Yes. So um, we are making strides to um, get all those fun foundational things um, together. Um, which for the most part we have, um, but uh, every day is a new day to conquer a giant. So um, <laughs> and that's just kind of where, where, where I am. So I, I definitely joined so that um, I can connect with other uh, markets and hear about um, the the pros and the cons and and we can lean on one another for advice so um the contact information should i drop that in the chat box yeah or? let's do that all in the chat by the way that's a great question uh if you uh when you get a minute go ahead and drop your contact info in the chat if you want the group to know if you want it to just be private for some reason between one another you can do the chat just to one person but uh let's do that uh as we're moving along be sure to drop it in if you're not uh, up to chat, uh, up to speak at the time. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Alicia. I'm going to help you with, oh, you got it. You got that part. Good. Uh, Nadja, uh, I'm, your biggest success. You've been doing this a while. What would you say is your biggest success? Well, what I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever stands out. <laughs> you know, I've done, I've done a lot of different parts of this business many, many different parts over the years. Um, I enjoy property management, but I think I think one of the biggest to me was when I had my office um, kind of in an organized structure, I had um, my admin assistants were all in place and the whole office was structured. Honestly, I didn't even need to work it. It was it was that good. But the problem is these admin assistants are all hourly. So when the REO business stopped, well, I kind of had to get rid of it. Right. Yeah, that huge overhead. That was very successful. Yeah, when you're flying high, when things are really cruising, if you can get in the fixed cost, then you're making more profit. But when things slow down, the top line slows down, those fixed costs can eat you up like an alligator. Uh, that's a really good piece of advice for everybody listening uh that's on the call from someone who's been in the trenches right you you've been chewed up a little bit <laughs> that there's no better way to learn <laughs> yeah i can tell you guys a whole lot of stories <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's what we're looking for by the way uh as, as especially the ones that uh match into somebody's with well, the next round when people are looking through their challenges so uh thank you Nadja. that's awesome uh, and again, by the way, I, I hope you're noticing what we're learning is we're learning a little more about each other because that's why we do round two, kind of open up just a little more and and uh, pull back the curtain. Uh, Vivica, uh, let's go ahead and again, tell us your biggest success. Biggest success is pulling the trigger. <laughs> I've been vacillating with this for a while. Um, like a several folk here, I've been in the business for a long time, over 30 years. And um, just now saying, you know what, it's just time to move forward. So really just, like I said, pulling the trigger and getting the foundational pieces in place. Yeah. Um, again, I know a little bit about each of you, uh, maybe if I've chatted with you. So I've chatted with Vivica. She is a super rock star listing agent, by the way. If you're looking for how to get a lot of listings, uh, I don't know, how many listings did you take last year, Vivica, or the year before? I mean, you, you, you do a lot. In the past year and a half, I've taken 130, right, right around 100. Well, so off market. So together, I'll just say about 120. Yeah, 
That's beautiful stuff. Thank you, Vivica. I, I saw Tristan's eyes pop open, right, Tristan? <laughs> it's good to hear what these people are doing. I, I know that most of the folks on the call are modest, but uh, it's okay if you throw out maybe one of your hot stats, right? I mean, that's okay. It, it shows people where you're coming from and, and it inspires them to do stuff, okay? So that's the other reason. That's why I like to hear about that stuff is mainly for the inspiration of others to know that it's possible. All right, so let me keep going. And I think because things move around on my screen for some reason, I think I'm back to uh, a chat, our new gal, our new person, I think, Chat Chatnova. Uh, can you hear me? If you can, unmute yourself and, and let's see, uh, have you introduce yourself. It's Shavana. Oh boy, I really blew it. I'm sorry. Shavana. Um, yes, and my name is Shavana. Um, I'm calling in from Chicago. I'm Welcome. Actually I'm actually um, looking to open a brokerage in on March 1st with a business partner that will be the managing agent. I am not a real estate agent myself. Um, I own a general contracting company here in Chicago, um, and I'm also an investor. And um, I've bought over 100 properties, so... We're going to extend ourselves to the real estate world and open up our own brokerage. And my sister's also on the call, Alicia. Oh, um, you guys are together. Yes. So. Oh, and your sisters. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. I love it. That is fantastic. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Okay, th okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Um, and that was pretty cool. So uh, I think I picked up a, an investor, owned 100 properties. Uh, again, as you're, you're all hopefully noticing, we got a bunch of different talent here. My notes are getting kind of messy. But anyway, uh, let's do this. Let's go into the most important round, which is uh, the, the problem round or the challenge round. You know, what, what's kind of holding you back? What do you, what's the thing that, if man, if you could get an answer to this, it would get you to the next step? That's kind of what we're looking for. All right, we're going to start up with uh, Tristan. Go ahead and tell the group and everybody listen. And if you can think of anything, maybe write it down real quick because we're going to ask you to participate in this next round a little more heavily as a, a mastermind group. All right, Tristan, what is your big, big issue? Yeah, so I have a, a big dream or a big goal that's far beyond um, anything that I've been able to achieve at this point in real estate. And Mike knows this, and it's my ambition to one day be able to sell a hundred homes in one year. Um, that's why Mike, you know, mentioned that that when um, um I think it was Vivica, yeah, yeah, when she mentioned how many homes she sold, that I my face kind of lit up. And he's right; it is inspiring to you know that realize that people are doing it and that it is possible. And and that's been my biggest challenge is making that leap, kind of from single digits to, to triple digits. So that's what I'm, I'm working towards at the moment. That's, that's uh, been my biggest challenges. I think one, the mindset of realizing that it's possible and also the skill set of like how to go about executing it and making it happen. Well, let's do this. Now that's, that's more like a personal production goal. And my goal on this call is more brokerage. However, I think a lot of people might have that uh, ambition, you know, to sell a lot of homes either uh, personally, either, because it would be good for you or as a leader of a team or leader of your brokerage. So let's go ahead and, uh, and open this up. Does anybody have any uh, comments they'd like to make for Tristan in his ambition uh, to sell 100 homes in a year? If you do, go ahead, just unmute yourself and jump in. Now we're going to kind of open up and just kind of have a free for all. <laughs> so uh, go ahead. If you have anything you'd like to say to Tristan. Kristen, I think you have to set your goal and break it down by a per week and per month and how many find out how many appointments you need to go on to get to to get to the ultimate goal per year. You have to just break it down and and start working that plan. I like hey, that. Tristan, my my feedback would be, is it the number of sales you want to have or is it a dollar amount that you want to make because my goal is different now even though i've hit that number it's about the income portion that i'd like 
the most. Unless you plan to have a team, you guys as a team hit that number, but then you have a personal goal of your own income amount that you'd like to do. Once you figure out how many appointments do you have to make, that process of getting those appointments made, conversion ratios and things like that. Yeah, it's it's um I feel like it's one and the same because maybe like my brokerage is predominantly my family. So it's whether if I'm hitting that goal personally or we're hitting that goal collectively, um, the, the end result is still kind of the same in the sense um, where it's my mom and my wife that are like the main members of my team. Um, so whether it's me personally achieving that or me and my mom collectively achieving that, the the end result would still be the same in the sense that our our lives would all like drastically improve from an income standpoint. Um, now it's not just focused on the, the income aspect. It's more so I think like, like, like I said, I was inspired to hear how many homes you were able to sell. And I think by me being able to accomplish that as well, I'd also be able to inspire other people as I grow and develop my, my company and kind of have like that proven track record of success and to be able to now replicate that and teach other people on how they can achieve similar results. Yeah, that's awesome stuff. This is exactly what I'm looking for, everybody. Doing exactly uh, the great, the right thing to help and support one another. Um, it's funny because I know a little bit about each, a few of you, and like Tristan, I know is uh, was a professional soccer player. Should have mentioned that, right? I mean, he has a sports background. He knows how to achieve high goals uh, in that arena, and he's trying to figure out how to translate them into this arena, and, and that takes some work. Um, so uh, let me just hit on that topic real quick. And again, anybody else at any time, please unmute yourself and jump in. I, I am not, uh, it does not offend me if you just start talking over me. In fact, I kind of like it. So go ahead and whenever. Uh, but for Tristan or anyone else who wants to hit high production goals, my recommendation is to pick a niche, okay? So as an individual, you would pick a niche. If you're a small brokerage, you need to pick a niche. Anywhere you want to excel, you've got to be the thing that somebody says, oh, that's this, that's this person or that's this company, right? If they hear a concept, they got to think of you either as a person or as a company if you want to really excel. It's counterintuitive for most brokerages in particular because you think, I want to be everything to everyone because I want a big, giant brokerage. Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> okay. I just got, got, you probably all figured that out. You got a niche. In fact, um, I think the person who had the biggest brokerage we've heard so far is Nadja, right? Where she had a big, giant organization going, and it was all based on what? REO, right? She focused in on REO. That was one, that was her niche. And the beauty of the niche is it puts blinders on your face so that you don't get distracted by all the junk out there because there's a lot of things that are going to try to uh, pull you into their realm. Uh, and then you can just focus on that one thing and get really good at it. And then like, the most important thing is the marketing aspect, which is people are attracted to you because they know what you stand for. If you're the REO person, then buyers are going to come to you that want REOs or investors are going to come to you that want REOs. Banks are going to come talk to you because you know how to do their business in the REO space. You understand that that's because that's focused. Now, that doesn't have to be your, your niche, but boy, it, it's clarity, isn't it? It creates clarity. So uh, the and the biggest thing there is to cut down like three levels. When it gets so tight in your niche that you're scared that you're cutting out market, try to go one deeper and you're getting there. You're getting closer. Okay, that's where you're going to excel. Uh, as a small marketer, you have a small amount of time. You have a small budget. you got to hyper-focus that thing in on the market that you want to work with and get those people to say, oh, they're talking to me. They're talking to me. If you can get the person on the other side to say that, you win. So if you're an individual trying to go out to the consumer, you got to get them to say, oh my gosh, Mike is talking to me. I want to call him up. Okay. If you're the brokerage talking to agents, you got to be saying, this is what I do. This is what I represent. This is how I work. And people go, oh, Oh, okay. Well, I want to learn that. I want to be part of that. I want to do that. So I'm going to come join you. If you're just going to be a generalist and go, you know, we got uh, XX splits. They're going to be like, well, so does everybody else. 
Okay, well, we we offer, I'm talking about your brokerage, we offer uh, a flat fee of blank. Well, there's probably other 10 companies that do that. You're, you're not going to get any market share. You've got a niche in to be something unique or special. What that is, I don't know yet. You got That's why I was asking some of your successes. What are you good at? What have you done before? You know, try to leverage off that. Or if you see an opportunity in the market, you can go after that and focus and one other thing I like to tell my kids, I've got adult kids now, is once you start rolling, if you've got a focus, people will get behind you and support you, okay? People will follow you, but you have to have a focus. If you don't, then you're just floating in the wind. All right, that's my little two cents on how can you sell 100 homes uh, as an individual or maybe sell 1,000 homes as a brokerage, right? You've got to get hyper-focused. you got to get hyper-focused. All right, Tristan, did um, that help out? Oh, I'm sorry, Corey. Corey, jump in. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to offer a couple of things that help that kind of I use to help me stay focused. Um, one of them is a uh, one page blueprint. And you can create this, Tristan. Um, it's going to tell you how much income you earn when you do sell a house. It's going to tell you who you're looking for, what type of person you want to work with. And then it's going to help you be focused on what you need to become in order to attract those people. And then what you got to do to actually get those leads or contacts. <clears throat> and then how many of these houses you have to sell in order to meet that income goal or house goal that you want to do. And then uh, I use a calendar. So you basically take the blueprint and then you calendarize it. And then that becomes your focus. And like Mike was saying, <clears throat> You guys got to be super focused because it's easy for us to get distracted. It's been one of my biggest <laughs> fights, you know. Uh, but those two, a blueprint, one page, it's like a one page business plan and a calendar. Those two things are super powerful for us as brokers or realtors, whatever. But I would have, you know, just recommend, and I can help you with both of those if, if you need it. Thank you, everybody, for your input. I've, I've been taking notes, and I'm definitely going to reflect on this and start to implement some of these ideas you guys have suggested. That's awesome. That was nice work, Corey. Uh, and Corey, I chatted with you once, and I just remember you were a, a, a really sharp guy that I liked uh, chatting with. And I'm trying to remember, if I get it wrong, correct me, but I think that you are an expert at getting on the phone and talking to people, right? You're yes. really good at that. Yeah. Because uh, not everybody is. I'm actually very nervous about that. I can do it, but I get nervous about it, whereas I'm really good at door knocking. You're trying to find your strength and see and capitalize on your strength, by the way. That's why we asked about strengths earlier. Uh, but good job. And the one-page business plan is very important. Uh, Corey brought up a really good point, and I'm just trying to kind of capitalize on some of these things. <clears throat> you can get that one-page business plan for your personal production or your brokerage. I did it in my personal production, uh, and I'll just show the power of that. I took a plan. I wrote out my plan on one page, and on the back of that page, I did my affirmations. I uh, went ahead and um, – what do you call it? When you put the plastic on it, yeah. Uh, oh, shucks. Anyway, <laughs> laminate. <laughs> yeah. I laminated that thing and I read it in the shower every morning, uh, front to back, you know, with all the heat and you're kind of fresh in the morning. And then I did it again at night. And you're like, well, that's silly. Yeah, I know it is silly. But uh, that year I went from 20 to 41 closings. So, OK, so then I did it again the next year and I went from 41 to 95 closings. All right. Well, I think it worked. And so then I did it again, went from 95 to 113. So uh, just saying these kind of little things, they sound silly, but you're programming your mind and they can be very, very powerful. 
Uh, the key is to get it all on one page. So it's you, your mind can set, suck it in and believe it's true. Uh, so Corey, thank you for bringing that up. It, it is a very powerful concept. All right, let's do this. Let's um, go to our next challenge. And by the way, we're probably going to run over the top of the hour. I hope that's okay with everybody. I, I didn't know how long it would take, but I really want to get the material done. So let's go. I believe Vivica is next. Vivica, what is your biggest challenge? I'm just kind of going across my screen, by the way. Uh, tell us what your biggest challenge is or problem or thing you would like us to address to see if we can help you out. Oh, um, like I said, I'm doing the foundational work, but what I've come to realize is Tristan kind of hit on it. He talked about that 100 number. I've always been, because I'm a listing agent, I probably closed out of over 100. I did 10, uh, probably 10 buyers and uh, six, I think it was six luxury uh, home sales. So that's a lot of clients that you're hitting. And my purpose is now uh, my net, you know, meaning my gross and net. My focus is moving closer to luxury listings and what it takes to make that happen and really implementing a foundational piece for that. Um, I'm, I've been creating the docs and, you know, my processes are pretty much in place where I feel I could just pull the trigger. So um, making that happen is a challenge as to, you know, just it's a challenge for me. So getting things in place for that, you know, I prospect some, I could be a much stronger prospect, Specter, Corey, and um, I'll lean on you some as well, um, as well as the group, because I'm sure you guys have some ideas. And if not, you know, you, you thought about some of this, but really getting something strong in place to edge into that niche. <laughs> awesome. Uh if you've got an idea for Vivica, uh, I think if I heard that right, Vivica, you mentioned focusing on that and, and so forth. But I think what I heard was most interesting was luxury listings. It, it, did I get it correct that that's the niche that you want to move towards? Yeah, that is correct. I, I've only done seven or I think it's seven six or seven, shall I say, over 585, and I'm ready to get into the uh, million dollar range. That's fantastic. See, what I like about that is that you're going to niche for your own personal work and you're going to niche your brokerage. See, and now instead of trying to be all things to all people, instead of trying to work entry level homes or move up buyers or that kind of thing or relocation or REO or... <laughs> You know, any of these other things, it sounds to me like you're going to narrow it down and say, hey, I'm going to work with only uh, properties that are above this price amount. OK, because the beauty of that is you're going to now start thinking about how am I going to do that? You know, am I going to do geographic farming, for instance? Is that going to be how I'm going to reach out to the people in these specific types of homes? What I take, say, Tristan Scott's power and go knock on doors in that neighborhood or Corey's power and go call on the phone into those neighborhoods? Am I going to do Mike's power and do marketing? I like to do marketing and send out marketing pieces. Uh, are you going to do, uh, I haven't heard it on the call yet, but a lot of people will break into that market by uh, going and joining uh, a, cl uh, a country club, right? Or social networks. Uh, charity work is a big one for the people that are trying to move into the upper end because they're going to hobnob. They're going to start meeting with these people that own these homes. Does that make sense? So you, you can start creating a master plan focused on this target or this objective, uh, this group. And the beauty of that, <laughs> if you're, if you, so by the way, all your marketing, your signage, all your, all your stuff is now going to be high gloss, high quality, um, everything you do has got to attract that group, right? Everything you say, everything you do. For instance, if you went to a super high-end restaurant, would they have prices on the menu? No, <laughs> they don't have prices on the menu. You got to ask, right? So for, I'm saying that because maybe you don't mention your commission anywhere until you meet them, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. it, you're trying to do everything in line with what they would expect of a high-end operation. 
okay? Uh, you have to make yourself attractive to them. And so you're going to narrow down that focus as who they are. See, Corey mentioned it before, this idea of the avatar, right? You're going to, who are these people? You know, how, who's my ideal person? How old are they? What do they look like? What do they sound like? What, where do they live? Uh, where do they work? How much money are they making? What's their, what's their lifestyle? You know, how do I know who they are so I can talk their language? It all comes down to, can I talk their language? All right. Yes. And that's the beauty of that niche. You can you can really start hyper focusing on that. Uh, you mentioned 585, for instance. Do you have a price? You need to have the price of what it is above this price that you would label as luxury. And then yeah, the I've joined. The, go ahead. I've joined the Luxury Institute Network. So I've now I've uh, finally drilled down to what our luxury price point is. So what I is have it? done that thus far. What is it? What's what's the luxury price point in your na your area? Eight seventy five. Eight seventy five. See, I wrote it down wrong. I have five eighty five. Eight seventy five above. Now, here's the key. Here's how I want to use this as a great example of niche and the power and the scariness of a niche. Now, every time you get a client who wants to buy something less than eight seventy five, what do you have to do with them? You got to refer it out. Refer them to my team. You got to refer it somewhere else. You can't work with them. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> okay, because you're going to lose some business. But it's proving who you are in this niche. Does that make sense? Okay, you've got to have everybody know that that's what you do. You are this niche. Okay, all right. Uh, let me open up anybody who would like to throw in for Vivica, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and let her know what you think about how she could develop this niche of luxury or her brokerage around it. Hey, hey Vivica, can I ask you a question? Go for it. I'm not sure if I'll answer. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> so you, you're, you're great at a listing agent, right? Yes. Do you? So do you I'm like good. do you like to do open houses? I do them as well. I don't I don't shy away from any of it. Um so no, I don't shy away from any of it. I do it for a lot for it's shifting a lot more now. So I have started doing them uh personally or bringing one of my BAs along with me. Uh but yes, no, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, the reason I asked you that because I'm like I'm good on the phone. Like I like to call people. So, like in your in your case, if I wanted to do like a million dollar listing, because if you had an open house, right? If you do it if you had a million dollar open house, the people that's coming there, they either they either gonna own a million dollar house or they gonna buy a million dollar house. They're gonna pretty much be in your, in your, in your, 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 you know, where you want to be. So, if you just call up a, a like a million dollar listing agent in your area, most million dollar listing agents they don't like to do open houses because they, you know, they like, hey, I ain't got time to do that. So if you just call one up and offer to do an open house in that price range, the people who coming in there. They're gonna be in your price range, and most people that's buying a most people that's looking at a million dollar or a one point five or a two, they either gonna be selling a million dollar house or either buy mm -hmm. like maybe even they either gonna be selling a million like selling a million dollars or maybe even selling a three million and downsizing to like a one million. And so, if you take the concept of that blueprint in that calendar and you say, well, I'm gonna just do two open houses a week at a million dollar price point or higher. It's going to put you in the luxury market. Like you don't have to do anything. You just gotta, you don't have to, you just gotta be there to help the people that come in. Like there's nothing else to become. There's nothing else to do because you are already who you are. You've been, you've been doing it for 34 years. So, the people that you're going to be attracted, that's going to be attracted to you, they're going to be attracted to you because of you can help them and not because of anything else. 
Thanks, Corey. A little slight bit of a mind shift. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you. I have a comment. I have a comment for you. So back in back in the early 90s, I was really doing the same thing, trying to get into a higher bracket price point. And I was working, well, it's not going to make any difference for me to say, on the east side for me, which was not very high numbers. And then um, so what I did is I moved into an office that really dealt with all these higher numbers. So I put myself, I was working at Remax at the time. So I put myself in that neighborhood where all those homes are million dollar homes. I started meeting the people. I hung out there. I made friends there. And those friends introduced me to the other friends. My dealer, or excuse me, my office was right next to the Mercedes dealership. So I met all those people that work there as well. Matter of fact, I was invited to a technician's retirement party. Go figure. So I, I ended up, you know, communicating. And honestly, like my whole career, I've worked on referrals. That was what I built was communication and social skills really to um, uh, interact with the people and people refer. There's nothing better than a referral. So you want to put yourself in the position where you meet these people, make them your friends and build that social network. And that will give you the business. Thanks, Naja. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah. Both did I say your name correctly? Devices. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Did I hear somebody? I'm sorry. Yeah. That, that, both those were excellent. Um, I want to play off of those real quick uh, to show this idea of niche and, and other things. Um, so <clears throat> uh, Nadja has a great point there. If you want to become a luxury agent, the number one best way to become a luxury agent is to move into a luxury neighborhood. It may not be easy, but if you can pull it off, I have actually spoken with a lot of agents that have done that, top producing agents. They will figure out a way to buy into that million dollar, two million, five million, whatever it is, neighborhood. And it may be a massive stretch and incredibly difficult for them to do, but they're doing it because they want to meet all the neighbors and hobnob and be part of that society or group. OK, uh, because Nadja just mentioned the referrals and they, they're going to refer to their friends. Right. I mean, that's where you go to first. You ask somebody who's, you know, who do you know who can help me with this thing? Uh, absolutely. Great point. Um, what else? The other thing she said was really powerful to me is she said when I wanted to go in the luxury, I moved my to a luxury office. I moved to a brokerage that focuses on luxury. And that's what I was mentioning earlier, Vivica. If you get focused on your niche and you're the you're the luxury company, you're going to attract other people that want to be part of that or are already part of that world. Other luxury agents will come join you, and then it kind of starts snowballing that that's the kind of company that you are. Um, the idea of Corey's for the open houses is actually pretty damn smart. Think about this: uh, if you could convince a uh, top agent in that market and luxury to let you hold it open. And then I'm going to do a spinoff on that, by the way, they may not want to do an open it, depending on where you're at, they may want to do just the private showings. You can still win with this. All right, let's, let's do the open first. The open idea is, uh, you know how you get a just listed, just sold and you do a just listed, just sold postcard. Why can't you do a just a open house postcard or an open house marketing piece, right? You are the representative standing in front of the house, <laughs> take yourself a picture in front of that big giant mansion and send that self that out to all the people in the neighborhood saying, hey, uh, you want to pick your neighbor? Come on over to the open house. Hey, check this out. Uh, in, in fact, you might want to do like we used to do in the old uh, broker opens where you have wine and cheese and whatever, and you're trying to introduce these people. Remember, try to think like they think. What would they want to be attracted to? This idea of the open house actually has some legs, uh, I think, for opening up some doors and getting your foot in there. And remember, you want to get people to connect your face with whatever it is you want, in this case, luxury homes. So you want to put that on a postcard. You want to put that in your marketing. Because I, can, I always talk in postcards because that's my era. But you could do that on social media. You can do that on a flyer that you send out to everybody. <clears throat> you could post that anywhere. You can do it through email whatever it's just they want to get that idea that's connecting you and that property and open houses is a nice easy way for you to get in 
without having actually been hired yet, but you can associate yourself with it. I right? just stand in front of the house. I'm holding this house open. You could do a video where you put it out on YouTube. I'm holding this house open on blank date, right? Come on over and check it out. I'd love to show it to you. And then you send that out to people. You have a connection in your postcard, a connection through your email. Do you, do you understand the power of the niche focus, by the way? We're getting an idea from somebody and then we all start capitalizing on it and kind of going forward because it's niched in a simple idea that we can all work on. Um, I think that was it. Did, did some of that help, Vivica? I was impressed with some of these uh, comments. How about you? Yes, absolutely. Thank you all. <laughs> all right, cool. Hopefully that'll help out. Um, Vivica, thank you so much. Uh, I think now we are going to the biggest problem or challenge for Nigel. Okay, so one of my, not one, my biggest challenge, I want to, and this is why I'm here today, I want to build my office. But every time I attempt to hire somebody, I actually cringe and and I talk myself out of it. I had a meeting today at 1230 with a potential agent. And honestly, the guy was brand new and I canceled it because I don't, I cringe, like I said, every time, but I want to build the office. Um, and, uh, but I don't want people in the office. So I have some ideas and I don't know if, you know, if they would work or not work. And I was hoping I can get some, um, uh, maybe clarification and also ideas on how can I build value as an independent broker and be competitive to bring people on, but I want to build it as a home base. Even though I have a physical location, I want to bring people on as a home base because I don't want to be a babysitter again, you know? And and so I'm kind of stuck. I just wanted to clarify, what did you mean you cringe? Like, what is it about, I guess, having like a potential new agent join your team that made you hesitant? When when I first opened up in 2003, I had 10 agents right off the bat, and they were with me for a few years. And most of those agents did nothing. They socialized. The drama was terrible, and they did not produce. And I don't even know why they were there and how they were living because nobody was doing anything. I was carrying everyone. I was making the um i was paying all the bills i wasn't making any money i was losing money so that's why i cringe today because i don't want to repeat that all right nadja that's uh absolutely understandable uh, I think that uh, for the brokers on the call who've been there, have hired people and watched them sit around and do nothing, it is incredibly infuriating, right? You're paying those bills, you're, that, all that money is going out each month, and they're not doing anything. So here's um, some recommendations that I have for you. And uh, everybody else, again, please chime in on this. Um, but a couple of quick thoughts off the bat. Number one is the niche idea. I'm going to come back to that. You have got to stand for something in your business that's attracting the right people. And so the, for as far as building a brokerage, you want to create what we call an avatar, right? Who's that ideal person that you're trying to bring in? You just said you don't want people who sit around the water cooler and blab all day. Got it. Okay. Continue to make a list of the things you do and don't want in that agent. Uh, for instance, do they have to have been active for five years? Five years or more in the business, right? Do they have to have a certain production level? They're either closing X number of transactions or X number of GCI every year. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the company. There was a company there's been companies that do that. They will only recruit active agents who uh, have hit certain production levels. Uh, and then what they do is they create a very attractive compensation program. But really, it's more than the comp. I hope everybody's already figured that out, right? It's it's this is what we stand for. These are the kinds of people we're bringing in to achieve this. Uh, let me give you a quick example. 
There was a company, I'm in Colorado, uh, I'm down in Denver. There was a company up in Fort Collins, which is about an hour north of us. Uh, many years ago when I started, in the ni- I was started in 93. So this is in the 90s. And there was a guy up there. <laughs> I won't say his name because you'll recognize him. It was a guy up there who was a broker, and he wanted to start up this brokerage. Uh, and he got together, started running it, and he built it up to 50 people, 50 people. Ready for this? Are you ready? Each agent averaged 50 closings a year. Let that sink in. 50 people and each agent averaged 50 closings per year. I've talked to these agents over the years. <laughs> I've talked to several that were sitting up closer to 100 closings a year. And the reason that those agents joined and the reason it worked is the guy niched it down to, we are going to get extremely good at repeat and referral. We are going to take your database and we are going to show you how to market to them. In fact, we're going to do some of the marketing. You are going to do the calling. You're going to be on this schedule to do all of these things. If you do these things, you will have the success. If you're willing to jump in and follow this program, join us. If you're not, go somewhere else. Okay? So he's attracting only the people that are going to follow this program. It worked. Uh, the name of that company was The Group. The Group. Just The Group up in uh, Fort Collins, uh, and the guy who started that, and I'm talking about is Larry Kendall. Larry Kendall, uh, he ended up creating a concept called Ninja Selling. Uh, Ninja Selling, you can go buy the book because he got so big, he started to teach this all over the country. But the idea that I want you to get is the niche. He niched it down. He said, look, this is what we do. We do repeat and referral. You're going to make X number of calls every day. You're going to make X number of emails every day. You're going to, in that, that, that those days, it was a send out a postcard, right? You're going to send out a, a handwritten note, this many per day. Those were the things that, that, that he was doing to attract that kind of person to his brokerage. Does that make sense? So you have to figure out what you stand for uh, because Otherwise, you're, you're going to keep running into the same problem of uh, willy-nilly different people showing up and you're not going to like them and you're not going to even know why other than you just believe they're not going to perform. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But if you, have, if you, if you want to do a niche, you got to create the actual niche. You're not going to be able to just sit, sit back and go, hey, I'm the broker, pay me some cash. You what s- other ideas do you have for niches? Say again? What other ideas do you have? I got a great one for you. I think REO is going to get big in about a year, about 12 months. You might want to start focusing on that and building that back up the core and your relationships with the banks. If you get that going, you're going to have agents tromping down the door to get involved with you uh, as a buyer agent to run your buyers around, right? You've got your core business focused. The people who did really good in the last crash, so to speak, Uh, that got into REO that I've talked to, I mean, it's really big, like sell 900 homes a year. What they were doing is they had their core competency business, right? So they were working with uh, the banks themselves. uh, And then they had their team kind of like you had set up with the administrative staff. And then what they did was they brought in buyer agents to run all the sign calls down. Uh, because you get so, as you remember, you get so many sign calls coming in and you can leverage off of all those signs and other marketing pieces. Most REO agents never did it because they got too busy. They just got too busy working with the banks. But you just either do it yourself or you hire someone in your brokerage to be the manager of that buyer side. And then you you do really, let me tell you this, if you go that direction and you're handing those people business, then the split is really low, low, because you're handing them business. Do not try to make them, uh, don't overpay them. That's the big mistake brokers make all the time. They run these models and they promise to pay 90% or 80%, or what is 70%, 50% is too high in this kind of model. You might have to pay 25%, but you're showing huge volume. Uh, I hired a, a listing agent years ago. I paid him 25%. And he was very happy. At Way back then, he was making six figures. He was happy as a lark. Okay, the percentage is not important. It's how much money they're going to take home. So you run that percentage down because you need that extra money to run the operation. 
and to run the marketing and the other things that are generating these leads. Anyway, all these leads are going to be coming in off those signs and you get, you can have a whole bunch of people that want to feed off of that. So that's how you can build the brokerage that way. Now you're saying, well, geez, what's going to happen when the market changes? You're right. You have to have an exit plan for how to shift. You have to shift plan. As you know, the REO is probably going to last, if it happens, it's probably going to last five to seven years. That's a pretty good way to make some cash. And then you can shift into, say, the idea of doing a, a repeat and referral business or something else. You've created some kind of database. Collect all the leads. That's the other. Try to think about what errors did you make or other people made the last time they did REO. Usually it was they didn't build out the database and they didn't keep in touch with all those people. Okay, because they were missing the other side of the transaction, the co-op side, because they were focused on the bank. So that might be a niche as an example. Here's another niche, brand new agents. I take in brand new agents. I love to take them in and teach them right. They don't have any bad habits. <laughs> it's a rough road. It is a rough road, but you can do it because they don't know anything yet. That is actually an advantage of a brand new person. They don't have any bad habits. You get them in and you run them right down the track, whatever that track is that you know well that will work, whether it's in repeat and referral, whether it's in prospecting, whatever it is, you take a brand new agent and you say, this is how the business works. This is how you're going to be successful. If you don't do this, it's an 85% failure rate in the first year. Go ahead and join anybody else you want. But this is what we do as a proven track record. And you're going to be accountable and you're going to be monitored. That's the way you win with brand new agents is you get them on a really hardcore track and they go, 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 go. They're making their 10, 20 phone calls every day or whatever it is that you have them do, uh, knocking on doors, whatever the situation is, and you get them in the track. Does that make sense? A lot of yeah, you know like what? I don't think agent. I could do it. I don't think I could do it myself. I think it's a lot of work to train new agents. I'd have to have like somebody like you to just, you know, do Zoom meetings like this and train them every week to keep them on track for us, you know? There are people that do that, but I'm not willing to do it. <laughs> I've already done it. <laughs> you you are correct. Us old timers, that's our problem, right? We get into our own ways <laughs> where there's only so much we want to participate in. But my, this is my point. You asked, what are some niches? Uh, you could become the expert at expireds. I think we're going to see a whole ton of expireds start to flood into the market. Already are. That's going to only accelerate over the next 12 to 24 months as prices start to, I believe prices are going to continue to slide. They've already slid in the country uh, since uh, June of last year, June of 2020. Prices in my area, for instance, have gone down 14.6%. If you look at almost any market, not all, almost any market, they're starting to slide, okay? I think that's going to continue for another 12 to 24 months. That's my personal belief based on what I'm looking at and all the trending, uh, the ratio, the affordability ratios of rent to price. Of, if you just look at all that, that's what it appears to be. It could be totally wrong. Mm -hmm. So what else are the opportunities there? You could become an expert at short sales, right? Uh, that actually kind of pairs with REO. You could be an expert at investors. I know people who will do nothing but work with investors. They like number crunching and they get other number crunchers uh, and they like to run numbers for people. They don't like to get into the emotional side. It's usually a, on the disc test, a C personality. They'll crush it in, uh, in working with investors. They usually have to add property management. Okay, but yeah, that's the niche. I, um, I was really wanting to get out of selling myself and just into more of management and running the office. You know, I don't know about everyone else on the call, but I, I, that's what my goal was to get out of selling altogether. Sure. Uh, just remember, you can't get away with doing nothing. <laughs> if you can, <laughs> let me know how you pulled it off. <laughs> I mean, right. No, because I know that's the ultimate dream is to sit back and not do anything. Right. And yeah. The idea for a, an individual agent was the seventh level, right? In the red book, seventh level, the whole thing runs by itself. You experienced a little bit of that at one point, right? You said you had the REO. It was kind of, it was firing on all cylinders and boom, boom, boom. It was so much fun to sit back and watch it run. Yeah. Yeah. But typically everyone I've ever talked to, nobody can maintain that level for a long time, right? Because something goes wrong. You have a key person quit or get sick or whatever, you know, or <laughs> embezzle money. I had that problem. You have all kinds of weird stuff that happens. Um, so you're going to have to be a little more active. 
Uh, but you can certainly hire in management to help you, it, it depending on how big you want to take this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The key, though, I, I got to tell you again, I think it comes down to niche and your avatar, who you're trying to find. Because then when you get somebody that's going to come in for an interview and they meet your avatar, you're going to be excited. You be like, man, I want to talk to Sally. I want to talk to John. They meet my avatar. They are it. You're going to jump right in with both feet. How how do you think you can determine, you know, uh, somebody, uh, you know, like finding the right person? I mean, how do we, uh, I don't know. Do you have to do disc those test. personality tests and disc. background checks? and DISC, disc test. DISC. Have you done the disc test? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah, Thank it's you. an old one brought up by Howard Brittner. That's where I heard it first. It's just, it's actually well used in our industry for a lot of people, especially in management. The D I S C, if you write that, those letters down, the letter D, the letter I, the letter S, the letter C. Uh, and if you type that into Google and go to Tony Robbins website, say Tony Robbins disc test, you, you can take a free disc test on his site. It actually costs money to take the test, but he'll do a free version. You can get the results. You kind of see what it's about. And it'll what help you categorize the kind of people. And you can make sure you're bringing in the right kind of personalities for the job you're trying to hire for. What it's is not the uh, it'll work, but it's going to be a lot better. Okay, say again. What was that again? I, I dropped my pen. No problem. Tony Robbins, the speaker, Tony Robbins. Yeah, if you just go to Google and type in Tony Robbins. A uh, free disc test, D-I-S-C, disc test. Um, and what you learn is you learn the four quadrants. And then as you identify people, you understand who they are. And it's what their natural tendency is. So it's natural for them to do X. Like an I is very outgoing. It's natural for them to talk to people and bring in new business, but they hate doing paperwork. So you got to pair them up with a C. A C is someone who loves to crunch numbers and do paperwork. So your admin has got to be C's and S's. If you put an I in an admin, they're going to flame out, right? If you put a C into high, uh, high contact sales, they're going to flame out. So you're trying to figure out the disc personality profile so you can match up the right person to the right job. Uh, Howard used to say you got to put the right person on the right seat of the bus, right? And, and if you find they're in the wrong seat, you pick them up and move them to another seat if you like them, if they've got good core skills or, or good uh, personality, attitude, et cetera. Then you can move them around to another position in the bus. It's going to suit them better. But the best thing is do the, the disc test off the bat. I did it totally at the beginning when I was hiring people. Always did it. Always gave them the disc test. And if I ever hired someone that wasn't the right fit on the disc, I paid the price. Oh, gosh, I paid the price. It was, mis <laughs> it was miserable for them and for me. Yeah. So I know what you mean there. Uh, that might help. Uh, but before that, as the master plan, you have to decide what does this business look like? What does it stand for? Who does it uh, service? That's the niche, right? And therefore, then who do I bring in? Now, your niche as a broker could be agents. I'm trying to provide services for these certain agents. Remax did that. They came in in the 80s. Uh, they actually saw the model from uh, real realty executives, but uh, Linegar came in back to Colorado after he went to Arizona and he saw it start a Remax because he's like, I'm going to just attract the top performers and I'm going to pay them 100% commission, which was unheard of at the time, and charge them a flat fee. Right? He designed his whole business around this avatar of a top performer because he realized they were the ones that generate the most revenue and therefore the most profit for a brokerage. Right? Um, but you don't have to do that. There are companies that have done a very good job of going out to part-timers. Right? There was a company here for a long, long time. All they did was part-time work part-time agents, they would charge them a monthly fee and a pretty big commission, but it was for people that are only selling one or two homes a year, right? They mm. just want to hang their license somewhere and, and do a couple deals a year. The company did great though, because it hired 500 of them, okay? You were talking about a home-based business, that's the kind of thing you can do, right? So that's why you got to think about the avatar and the model that you're trying to create. And once you get that, everything else is going to fall into place. Okay. All right. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nadja. Thank you. Uh, we got to keep rolling because I talk too much. Uh, <laughs> All right, Corey. Corey, why don't you come in and tell us uh, your biggest challenge? 
<clears throat> well, just come in to learn today and to, you know, uh, network with like-minded people. Um, and uh, I guess my biggest challenge really is my message. Basically, same thing that Naja said, you know, delivering the value to the agents, you know, that I want to hire. Um, but you you really just gave me, I think, what I was looking for when you answered Naja's question. Um, because I really do realize I, I need to pick a niche. And, you know, I've built my business by referral over the years. And uh, that's pretty much where most of my business come from. So uh, I think I do want to do a by referral only type niche uh, for agents. And I know I can help them earn a hundred thousand a year. Um, cause I do it, you know, very easily. Um, yeah, I think I want to do that. <laughs> so I think that helped me, but you know, the identity, the setup, what value can I add to agents, how to communicate that value and then how to deliver that value is like my biggest stopping point. It's like that keeps me stuck in my head more than anything else. Oh, and Nadja, there's a platform. If you want to be virtual mm -hmm. or work from home, there's a platform called Moxo.com. That's what I use. I got my whole business set up on it. It's amazing. So just check that out for a virtual or mobile company. Can you type it in the chat? What is it? moxo.com oh. okay but um yeah uh my i think that's my biggest challenge man yeah me too <clears throat> Naja, did you have something you want to say for Corey? no i'm i think we're on the same uh wave here we're both having the same challenges it sounds like I know this call is going long, by the way, but I'm going to hang in there with you if you guys are okay with that. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to give you a couple ideas, Corey. And I think we chatted about this before, but I want to bring them up again. So you actually have uh, a little bit of a, a good idea going there, and you've got a niche. Your niche is this. Your niche is repeat and referral. You're t you want to talk to agents uh, who want to close two transactions a month. right? So here's... What happens is you can start creating your marketing to attract it, right? Are you an agent who wants to close two transactions a month, sell two homes a month? You could say it that way. Um, are you an agent who wants to sell two homes a month working with your friends, family, and past clients and earn $100,000 a year? And we should chat. See how I got that down to one sentence? That's your offer. Right. We know who you want to attract now. You want to attract people who want to work with their friends, family, and uh, their, their past clients. So friends, family, and past clients, and uh, they want to sell two homes a year. Okay, so now we're not talking about part-timers anymore. And, uh, or maybe they are, but they want to get into full-time production. And um, they want to learn how to make $100,000 a year, or whatever number you pick. Right? It's funny, $100,000 a year has been the, the hot number for like 30 years or something. But <laughs> <laughs> So maybe they'll go up to 200 or 250 or something later. I don't know. But it's kind of funny to me that that number is stuck for so long. Um, but it's it's still a very valuable and important number. Because you get my point. You're able to identify what they get. When you get into marketing, so we haven't really talked as much about marketing, but remember you want to talk their language and you want to make them an offer that attracts them because it's what they want. <clears throat> in this case, you're ta you want to talk to agents who want to close two homes a month. If they're in the industry, they know what that means. Uh, they want to make $100,000 a year. They don't have to be in the industry and understand what that means. And they want to do it by working with their friends, family, and past clients. Repeat and referral. You could just reduce it to referral if you want, if you want to get clarity. But you need one sentence, one headline, okay? I go back to my marketing days. When you did a marketing piece, the headline is 90% of the success of the ad, the headline, the call out. If you don't attract them, sell them, get them interested in that headline. The rest of it doesn't matter. And that's why people blow it. They spend all their time in the body copy. They need to spend their time in that headline, right? Focusing and testing and trying different headlines. 
uh, to attract it. But in order to get there, you have to have your avatar. You know, who am I trying to attract? And then you got to do what's called a call out. You got to call out and say, hey, you, come over here. You people that want this, come over here. I can help you do it. Make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, Corey, well, I have one more question. Sure, jump in. When, when you're talking avatar and, and you know, people with, you know, uh, um, certain personalities and whatnot, in your experience, is it better to work with somebody that's the same as you? Uh, that's a great question. Is it better to work with somebody the same as you or not? And the answer is depends on what you're hiring for. It doesn't matter what you are. It matters that you hire to the position. Okay, is that a mind shift? So if I'm going to hire an admin person, I talked about the DISC test. I'm going to hire a C or an S. I'm going to hire somebody who just loves paperwork. They love details. They love to crunch numbers. They love to be accurate. They want to get it right. That's not going to be my salesperson. My salesperson's on the other end of the spectrum. Okay, that's an I. That's why you need to learn DISC. Uh, but the I is really out there. They're flamboyant. They're going for it. They love to talk to people. They just run into a crowd of people and chat with them, and they'll just blah, 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 go up all day long. Um, and that's the kind of person you want to hire for a salesperson, okay, uh, in general. Uh, if you want to hire a prospector, somebody who's on the phone pounding, you want to get a D because they're really determined. They they like to go down and get goals done. Do, 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 do. They'll get those twenty. They'll get those twenty five or hundred calls done in that that day because that's their objective. And Ds are going to focus on an objective. You, you see what I'm saying? You're tying into their personality. Does that make sense? Instead of just throwing the dice and hoping. Yeah, here's the biggest problem when you hire, you're going to hire someone you like, and that means they're like you. <laughs> Sometimes you have to hire people you don't like. <laughs> and I don't mean you hate them or they're terrible people. What I mean is they don't gel with your personality because they're not your personality. They're the other kinds of personality. And that's why you got to figure out what you are on the disc test to realize why you're pushing away people you should be maybe attracted. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. So your staff is going to be different than the people you hire for sales. Hey, hey, Mike. Yes. I got a question. That triggered a question in my head when you said that. So let me ask you this. What's the best, in your opinion, personality for a broker? One that wants to manage other agents or yeah. even mentor or train other agents. Like what's that, what's that dispersonality for that type of person? Yes, they actually have an answer for that, and it's a D, a D, a dominant personality. You have to be the driver of the business uh, if you're going to be at the upper end. Now, it's not always a D. By the way, there are people who are successful that are not Ds. It's just it's easier for them. It's easier for them to walk in, take control. That's their personality. They just walk in, they take control, they tell people to go here and there, and they just they do it, right? They get stuff done. Right. They hate that things don't get done. That's a deep personality. That's their strength. Um, as opposed to CSC, they don't care whether it gets done or not. They just want it to get done right. Their strength mm. is the details. They're really good at the details, but they're not going to be good necessarily at making sure other people get things done because the D's are like, I got this objective. It's got to get done by this date. Let's go. Right. Everybody else go. Come on, go. Right. And people don't like them because they're over the top. Uh You've heard like Balmer at IBM, he used to stand on desks and yell at people and stuff. Yeah, he was a crazy hyper D. Of course, now he's worth like what, 10, 15 billion? I don't know, it worked for him, but he was insane if you hear the stories. He was a hyper D. Uh, you don't have to be a hyper D, but you ask me who's gonna do the best at leading this group, leading this brokerage? It's gonna be a D. Now, most people aren't like that super hyper D, you may have some other uh, tributaries, like you may have more uh, C or I. You need to find out what you are because you're going to lean to that. Uh, let me give you a better answer on all this. You work into your strength. You work your strength, and then you shore up your weakness with other people. Too many people try to fix their weakness. They say, oh, you know, I'm not good at blank. I better go work on that because I'm not any good at it. You'll be miserable. Forget that. Life is too short. Focus on your strength. Get going down that path and then pull in the other people that can do the other parts. So 
I know people who are not D's, but they want to run a broker or they want to have a brokerage or own it. They'll hire a D to manage the office and they'll go do what they enjoy doing. Maybe they're a high I. They'll go do the sell side and crush whole tons of cash into the company. And then this D will manage it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That's usually the typical answer. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it's a good one. That's why you guys got to get good at disc. If you want to be a broker and hire manage, bring people in and rotate them, you got to get good at disc because it'll make you understand why you are the way you are. And then there, why you want the people, other people to be a certain way they're supposed to be, right? But remember, match the personality to the position. You'll have the highest level of success. It's not guaranteed. They may still flame out. They may still have problems. But you're trying to find someone with a great attitude that has the right personality because you can teach that person skills. You cannot teach them attitude and you can't teach them personality. That's already baked in. Mm. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Corey, did we have we answered your question on uh, your biggest challenge? Uh, your your challenge, Corey. You need to write down that avatar. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Are they yes. someone who's brand new? Are they an agent who's been in the business five, 10 years? Uh, is it someone who's been struggling? See, because if you learn, let's, let's say they've been in five years, and they've only been able to sell three homes a year, but they want to sell 24. Ooh, you got a great message for them. Hi, have you only been selling three or five homes a year? I have a way for you to sell 24 homes a year and earn $100,000 a year. Would you like to come chat with me? Come over and meet with me. Okay, you're getting them in the door. And then, by the way, you're going to have a screening process to try to funnel them down. Uh, Naja, I uh, probably received, I'm not making this up, over a thousand applications for my team over the years, over a 17 year period uh, between the real estate and the mortgage side, easily over a thousand. I never hired a thousand. Oh God, no. Oh no. We screened down. It had to be even way more than that because we would have like anywhere from 10 to as high as a hundred applications for a job. And we would just riddle them down. And if we, and then if, by the way, if we were doing that and we saw someone really strong, we'd make a position for them. We'd open up something. Okay. Cause I'm like, oh my God, that's talent. Your, your job becomes talent. Can I find talented people? Mm. Talent. Uh, my wife and I like to call eagles and ducks. I was an old trainer. I used to call them eagles and ducks. Uh, eagles <laughs> fly high. They make things happen. Ducks sit around quacking and complaining, right? You're looking for eagles. So even with agents, you um, qualified the agents as well? Absolutely. Yeah, I used to joke with people when they come in on the first. We would do three or four interviews with each one. My favorite thing was, here's a pen. Sell it to me. <laughs> I'd find out <laughs> really fast if they were any good. <laughs> okay. But they never got to me until later. They'd have to fill out uh, an application. They'd have to do the disk test. They'd have to meet with uh, my screener who would meet with them first. Uh, and then they would get to me. And after that, I would introduce them to my group to get their review of the person. That way I didn't hire duds. Because when you hire bad people, it's awful. As you already figured out, they waste your time. You're focused on them. You, you're worried about them instead of the business. You get distracted. It's blah. Yeah. That's why I keep talking about avatar. So you can do it for your agents. You can do it for your staff positions, avatar. And the key of all this is the niche. It's going to drive everything. You're going to find out the kinds of people that can help you match this niche or service this group of people, if that's the way you want to think about it. I'm going to service this group of people, and I want to serve them at the highest level. You figured it out. Uh, Nadja, that was what was cool on the REO side, right? You brought in these assistants to help you service those banks. Mm -hmm. You probably had duds that you brought in and you had the eagles and you kept supporting the eagles and you tried to get rid of the, the ducks, I mean, right? Yeah, well, and, and I didn't have anybody to handle some of my buyer calls. Honestly, some of them just went to the wayside. I hate Probably to say a it. lot. That's why I'm saying if you're going to do the model again, look at it where you do the hybrid where you have the buyer agents come in at a very low commission split to them. A buyer agent comes in, they're working your, uh, your, your scraps, right? They're working your table scraps. They're working your trash can, as some of the agents call it, <laughs> where Lee just falls in the trash can. They're working all that business. They're working your sign calls so you can stay focused on your sellers. Mm -hmm. 
uh, your banks okay. in this case. Well, and another thing that I'm doing, I was doing a lot of is the broker price opinions, which kind of carries me through the downtime, especially during COVID and whatnot, you know. But you could hire a C to crush those things out. Boom, 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 to keep in relationship with the bank, right? Mm -hmm. That's what these people do when they create these models that were really huge, is they would just find the right person for the right position to fulfill a need, like doing BPOs. Yeah. So that's really what I have to work on. Okay. You can do whatever you want. It's just my recommendation if that's the model you want to do, right? Corey, I hope this helped. I hope we answered your question. Did we? Yeah, I mean, I got, yeah, definitely a, a great avatar. Just got to work it out, you know, put some more. I guess I, I would, you know, I, I struggle with getting the message out there. Like, you know, should I just put it on a website? Should I go market to, you know, should I call agents? Like, I don't know how to uh, really reach out to this target market. I, you know, I got some ideas, of course, but, uh, you know. Yes, just you become a different quick. person, Corey. If you're going to mm -hmm. build a brokerage and your idea is to build out agents in a brokerage, what you're going to do is you're going to create a marketing plan to agents to attract them and qualify them and get them in to your system. You might want to create your system first so that it's easy for you to feel confident talking to them because you have a track record. That's what I used to do on listings. That's why I was able to list 70 to 80 homes a year is because I just had a process, right? I knew the process was going to work. And all I had to do is get people into the top of the funnel, into the top of the process. I knew it was going to all play out to the end because I created it. The very first time I was scared to death because I'm like, I don't know what the process is. But after I created it, it worked. You need to do the same thing. If you got somebody, here's the question you ask. If somebody joined my company and they want to do this, how would I get them into production? You're going to gotcha. have to have some kind of training to do that. Uh, it can be video training they do on their own. It could be a book they read. It could be you coming in, supplementing it. It's what I had to do uh, when I built out a mortgage business. They didn't have mortgage brokerage licensing in my state, so I had to train all these people. So I had to make sure they were good quality. I'd bring them in. I, I actually did a two-week class to get them up and running, like boot camp, uh, and get them running that way. We did the same thing all the way back to my buyer agents, right? We brought them in, trained them. Uh, my best, my favorite one was my listing uh, agent. I brought him in and had him shadow me, right? The idea of shadowing. I trained him, and then I had him just walk behind me for 30 days in every listing I went on. Right. I, my big month, month, I listed 21 homes in a month. Right. So this guy's going on. He's getting a crash course on how to do listings. And what I told him was, you just sit there at the table and you don't say a word. You just listen. If they look at you, you just listen and smile. Yeah. And if they ask you a question, you say, ask Mike. OK. And that's what he did. Uh, and he got really good. When I put him in production, his very first month, he listed 14 homes. Wow. Okay? Because he shadowed me and learned. He learned my dialogues. He learned my language. He learned how I was going through the contract and teaching people and you know educating them. He learned how I handled objections. Does that make sense? Yeah. What you got to do is you got to create a training program for these people. Uh, that will make you feel more confident. That's why you got to narrow in. What do I want them to learn? Here's what, how I'm going to teach them how to do it. You said I'm going to teach them how to do what I do. Perfect. And by the way, then you can stand there and say, hey, look, I sold... 20 homes last year, 24 homes or whatever it was, all repeat and referral, and I can show you how to do the same. That is super powerful. People will be attracted to that. Remember, the average agent only sells four homes a year. So if you're selling 20, they're like, oh, my God, he's five times better than me. Right? Don't compare yourself to me who sold 113. Yeah, I'm not going to join your group. I already know how to do it. You're talk, trying to talk to the avatar of somebody who's not there. They either are branded to the business or they're struggling. And you're going to help get them up and running. And now you've got a plan for how they're going to do it. Because remember, that's what you got to do. That's going to be the interview. <laughs> the interview is going to be, tell me all about yourself, because I got this really awesome, amazing training program. But I ain't going to let you in unless I can see that you're your quality of person. Because if not, you're wasting my time. And I can't, I don't have enough time to do that. Right. You understand the attitude as well? Okay. Yes. So if you create your training program, Corey, so if you were going to write an action plan, it'd be training program. Uh, and then you're going to go into marketing. I gave you a, a phrase earlier to use uh, yeah. as an example, right? Uh, yeah. 
just just try to figure out what do they want? How can I tie that together? Hey, do you want to learn how to sell two homes a, a month uh, 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 to your friends, family, and past clients and earn $100,000 a year? How simple. It's one sentence. Do you want to learn how to sell two homes a month to your friends, family, and past clients uh, and earn $100,000 a year? That's it. Boom. That's it. That's yeah. the headline, right? Now you can take that. Listen to this now, Corey. Now that you've got that, you can go to different mediums. So you can take that idea and you can go and uh, you can put it on a postcard. You can put it on a social media post. You can put it on uh, an email blast that you send out or a text message. That one sentence now can go anywhere to get someone attracted to you. Ready? Here's, here's the power one. Ready, Corey? You can do that in a phone call. You can call up an agent in your market and say, hey, uh, do you have a second? I got a quick question for you. Sure. What is it? Hey, uh, I was just curious. Uh, do you want to learn how to sell two homes uh, per month? Uh, and by the way, here's the thing I throw. Sell two homes a month, each and every month, uh, to your friends, family, and past clients and earn a, a consistent $100,000 a year. Uh, are you curious in learning how to do that? I, I, I love to play pool, billiards, right? So I'm setting up the next shot because I know if they're my avatar, they're going to go, yeah, I want to know how to do that. <laughs> right? And you say, right. great. And here's the next key. You don't tell them what happened. You don't go into what they do. You just say, Awesome. I don't have any time right now, but I'd love to chat with you about this on a 15 minute phone call. Let's set up a quick appointment. And then you get yourself a little Calendly thing and you set yourself up an appointment for you. You set it while you're on the phone. It only take like three minutes. You set the appointment at a group of time that you do where you go out and you talk to agents about your program. You can either bring them in as a group or you can bring them in one as one. But it's this time that you've set aside to do it. Does that make sense? That's where you're going to make the presentation. And remember, you're qualifying them. They think they're qualifying you, but you're qualifying them. Actually, they know you're qualifying them, but you're qualifying them the whole time. You're going to ask them to take fill out application. Fill out. Once you give them the basics, remember, only talk about the benefits there. What are they going to get? That's all they want to hear is what are you going to get? What's their life going to look like if they join you? All the details don't matter. They don't care about the details yet. They will later. You'll teach them how to do it later. The key is this is what they want. They want to sell two homes a month. They want to consistently. They want to make 100000 plus a, a year. Uh, and they want to work with their friends and family and past clients. They don't want to do. So you can say what it isn't. You're not going to be pros, cold call prospecting out to strangers. You're only going to be talking to friends. Right. That's the other thing is you talk the negative, the opposite, what you're not going to do. Um, they'll lap it up. You'll have that 15 minute phone call and they'll be like, yeah, this is great. And they're going to say it before you, they're going to say, what's the next step. Right. Okay? And then you have to have the next step. Well, you just go to this website and you fill out an application. You could do a Google, uh, uh, what do they call it? Google. Google form. Yeah, it's free. And they fill out the application and it comes to you. Perfect. And by the way, go take this test over. At Tony Robbins will give you a free test. They're going to get the results, download them, and email them to me. I have people do that all the time. They send me over their results, and we work on them together. But I'm going to see where they are on the disk test. If they're not where I want them on the disk test, or if I don't like anything in the application, I just reply back, and I say, I'm so sorry. It's not going to work out right now, but I really appreciate you taking the time. Okay? Right. You have to be willing to scream, get rid of, cut. A di uh, decision means to cut, to reduce. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Uh, Mike, I'll give you one other. Oh, I'm sorry. Mike, quick, quick question. Yes. You said you have um, this disc uh, somewhere. Is it a free? A free uh, yeah. Disc? You can. Uh, there are resources all over the place, like this book. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, it's not the newest or the late, it's just a book that I saw that was really good. It's called Behavior. And it's mm -hmm. written by Brian Eisenhower. You can buy it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It'll teach you a little bit about DISC and how it works, you know, the, the different profiles. Okay. Yeah, but is it an uh, online test? Uh, and then you can take the, yeah, see, in the old days, we'd have to pay for a test to be taken, but you can get a preliminary test at Tony Robbins' website. You can send people there to do it. What Tony Robbins does is he gives a free disc test for the beginning. And then 
uh, the reason he does that is that he tries to upsell you into a paid t- result. Right? He said, oh, if you want to know what the results really are, then pay me 100 bucks. Or if you want to get a better version of this, then pay me 200 bucks. And you only need the free one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you just have people do the free one. They give it to you the results. And then you compare it and you look at your disk profile and you see, do these people match what I'm looking for? If they do great, if not, the other thing you could do is you call them up and say, Hey, I'm sorry, you don't match this position for what we're looking for right now, but we're going to keep your information on file because you might be a better match for this other thing we're going to be doing down the line, which may be true, right? Um, So you should keep a little database of those folks as well. Corey, I just wanted to mention that you can get a database of agents from your MLS, okay? And then there are companies out there, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the names of them. There are companies that put together stats on that I think it's real estate it. list. Go ahead. Real estate list. Yeah, real estate uh, broker list. The real estate agent list is a company it's called that real estate list. list. Yeah, I would look right now. Here's a company, and I apologize. I can't remember the name of it. I've heard it a couple times. I think there's actually two out there. Look them up on Google. It'll take a while, but here's the idea. The idea is they will tell they sell to brokers, and you guys are brokerages. Okay. They sell a product to brokerages that will go into your MLS and give you a list of the names uh, and contact information of all the agents that meet a parameter. Like they sold X number of homes last year, okay? Or they work in a certain market area or the combination of the two. And so you can find out, you can just go to agents that already sell. Or Nadja, you can find them, they already sell 30 homes a year. These are the list of those agents that already do that. Here's how many uh, listings they had here. Here's how many buyers. What What is the company name? Or, or... I can't remember the name of the company. It's Broker something. I, I'm sorry, but if you go into Google and you look it up, you, you should start. I just been planting some seeds and I apologize. I don't remember the name of it. I've just heard people talk about it recently. Um, you have to be a brokerage to buy it and it goes into your MLS. That's what it does. Broker analytics, maybe broker. I just can't remember the name. I'm so sorry. But that's what I would do if I were you. Remember, if you're a D, you're going to go find this stuff. You're just going to (laughs) go. Once you get driven on something, you're going to go find it, right? Um, Um, I had, I just posted in the chat something that I was looking into and I haven't quite used it yet. Um, but they do charge money, but it gives you all the information from all the agents into in the whole states, I think. Yeah, it's a so, good contact list. I don't know if that's list. something you want to look into. Absolutely a good contact list. Nadja, that's a good one. Uh, it's realestateagentlist.com. Uh, and that, I've used them before, actually. And they'll give, but their data is just going to be on the contact info. Okay. And okay. some of their data is old. This other company, <laughs> Broker Analytics, I can't remember the name. Uh, this company goes into your MLS and looks at what people are doing right now. So if you're looking for production numbers, uh, if they got to meet a certain hurdle or a time that they've been an agent, other things like that, that's how you can qualify your list. Well, Corey, what's it called again? I don't remember the name, but I think it's something like Broker Analytics, now that I'm thinking about it. Broker Analytics. If you start doing that, believe me, you'll find it. I talk to other brokers, start looking around in the Google, you'll bump into it if you got the idea. Um and I believe there were two companies that do it. Uh, I just tell I don't, I don't uh, work in that area all the time, so I don't know the name. Sorry. But just the idea. Now you know it's out there. Corey, what, the, the bottom line for me for, with you is I would get a list with your skill set, and I would call. I would call 10 of them a day, and looking you're hunting for the ones you want. Okay? Just remember to be very critical that they meet your parameters. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do not hire anyone that could. I used to joke, do not hire anybody who can fog a mirror when they breathe on it. <laughs> that's too low of a bar. But that's what most brokerages do, right? They're just churning and burning. They're trying to take people in and they work out great. And if they don't, they don't care. They're running through the numbers. Um, I, I won't say names, but uh, you know, there's a big brokerage out there. They have a 35% um, turn rate. One third of the agents they bring in leave every year. And it's a big company, right? They know that. They just know it's going to be a churn and burn, 
right? They know the other third aren't going to do much, but they're going to hang around. They've got this side. They're going to keep them or fire them. And the other third, uh, maybe they'll work out, right? And only a very small percentage are going to do a lot of volume. That's why I'm saying if you can niche, you become a very specialized type of brokerage where, like, we're not hiring everybody. In fact, that's something you start to brag about. I only hire one in 50 applicants. I only hire one in one in 100. I don't know if you're going to make it. What does the most brokers do? Oh, come on in. We'd love to chat with you. You bet you. Come on, just sign right here. We'll get you started today. Uh, I don't know if you're going to make it. I am looking for certain agents that have certain skills. The Eagles are going to be like, oh, cool. They're, I'm going to have other Eagles. And the Ducks are going to be like, I can't do that. I don't like that. I don't want to be around that. Good. Go somewhere else. I only want the high flyers. I only want the people that are doing really good or want to do really good. Bring them in and let me show them what to do. I know the Eagles are going to take my knowledge and run with it. I know the Ducks are going to complain every single second about it. Does that make sense? And the Ducks become a poison to everybody else in the office. So that's why you got to get rid of them fast. All right, Corey, that's my advice to you. Um, hope that helped. Tatiana, I made it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks for everybody sticking around. Tatiana, yes. tell us what your biggest problem is and how we can help. Yeah, my biggest problem is uh, my agents are not productive and um, and not that uh, they don't want to work. They are just um, not having um, enough um, um, energy or, or I don't know, um, maybe because they are too busy with families and it's like um moms at home and they they don't have um time maybe sometime uh, uh to, to be more productive so i my challenge to to make them working harder <laughs> never gonna happen <laughs> that's like turning a duck into an eagle <laughs> but you gotta know that you cannot motivate people to do something they don't want to do. You can't well, I, I know they want it. They, they want it to sell. No, they, they don't because they're not doing it. They don't really want it. It's hard. It's hard because you and I, we're all good people. We love people. That's why we're in the business. We love people. So it's so hard when we have to qualify or label people and say, you're not going to make it. Right? I know you do it privately. I know you go to your significant other or good friend and you go, Man, so and so is not cutting it. Oh my God, I got to get rid of them. And they're like, I don't know how though, because I like them because they're a nice person. Yeah. Okay, so I got a couple ideas for you on this. I like this group because you guys are mature. <laughs> You're not brand new, wet behind the ears. So you'll appreciate what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. People don't change, people are whoever they are. You're trying to just go through the, the, the list and find the people that match what you're looking for. You cannot change them. You cannot turn them into something they're not, uh, even though you want to. There's so many people in your life you want to help them change something. It's never going to happen unless they want to do it. So stop looking to change people. Instead, look for people that already have the qualities or the skill set that you want and then help them get what they want. You understand? They're already kind of looking for the answer. You just help them get there faster. And so all of this is the same idea. Corey's same idea uh, as well. And that is you got to identify what can you do for people? What is your special skill? What, yeah. what is your expertise that you know? Like you did REO. Could you teach people how to do REO? Or have you done a bunch of referrals and you could teach them how to do referrals? We don't know enough about you. Do you know how to do expireds or FISBOs? Do you know geographic farming? What's your special skill that you've done? Do you know how to go out to a, a group of people? I know people that are networkers, like they can meet people all over the place. That's their skill. Whatever your skill is, this is where you kind of go back to your skill. I can't remember who asked it earlier. Um, do you try, I think it was Nadja. Do you hire people just like you? And the answer is no. However, now we're flipping it around. If you have a skill, you can teach them. Like if somebody wants to know geographic farming, oh man, if I were going to do it today, I'd just get a whole bunch of geographic farmers because man, I could teach them what to do. I was sending out 10,000 pieces of mail twice a month, right? And my height and my geo farm, and I even got up to 35,000. 
When I went into the mortgage side, we literally sent out millions of pieces. I know how to do direct mail really well. If somebody wants to learn that, I would tell them that and I would bring those kind of people in to learn how to do it, right? But they would have qualifications in my case. They'd have to have some experience. They'd have to have some skill sets that they could do. They'd have to have some resources so that they could actually do the geo farm. And now I'm going to take them down the road with me and teach them how to do that. Do you understand? I have another question, Mike. How would you do, uh, what would you do if an um, agent is contacting you and they are ready to join, but they don't want to spend on anything um, like no um, membership uh, for for realtors organization. Uh, they don't want to buy uh, their own um, like a card to to like to centri to centri lock boxes. Uh, Can I get the use... answer? Huh? You ready for the answer? Yes. It's so one hard. word. It's Fire. one word. Ready. This should become part of your dialogue. Everybody ready? No. Next. Next. <laughs> Next. I can't help you. I cannot help you. You 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 don't meet the parameters. You are in the example you gave, you are the worst example of somebody I can help. I can't help. You don't even want to be an agent. I mean, I, I can't help you. There are certain minimum requirements to be an agent, right? I mean, yeah. We're not even, they can't even do that. The, I don't know who you're talking about. They, they're not even willing to do that. They're, sorry, next. I can't spend any time with you. I love you. Well, maybe we'll go drink a beer later, you know, if they're a friend of yours, but I cannot help you in this world. This yeah. world, I need people that can do, you're, that's the minimum. You have to have a max, you have to have a much higher level bar that they have to qualify, not just be an agent. They gotta be an agent, do all those things, but they gotta be willing to take action. So that's why it comes down to, you've got to have a track for them to run on. If you're going to be a niche player, uh, niche brokerage, you got to have a track for them to run on and you have to show them the way to do it, right? And, and either you're teaching it or somebody you teach learns how to teach it, but they've got to have a track to run on. By the way, you could do video course training, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how you can leverage like so you don't have to be there every minute. And then you just come in, so you do have them watch 10, and then you come in on the 11th and you say, okay, any questions? No, okay, go back and watch the next 10. Hey, got any questions? Right, mm -hmm. so you can get them going down a path that way. Um, but the key before that, see, this, this is hard. You gotta think of a big picture of what's gonna win, but that big picture has gotta be a niche. Once you do that, I'm telling you, everything works out. The only time I've ever had huge success in business is when I niched into this little teeny thing that was scary as hell, okay? Okay. Yeah. And by the way, uh, here's some hard advice. You may have to let go of some of the people you already have. Yep. So what you're going to do is you're going to create your niche. And then you're going to go take all your people that you currently have, you introduce them and say, hey, look, the business is about to do a, a shift. We're doing a pivot. And we're going to go down this niche here. I think you're all wonderful. I think you're great. Thank you so much for being with me all this time. All I need to know is, do you want to go down this niche with me? If you do, let's get on board. If not, I'm not the right place for you anymore. And you need to go on to XYZ. Now, you can have those conversations one on one especially with your hot performers. If you have any top performers, you probably talk to them one-on-one -on -one, or you can do it in the group, right? And the only problem with the group is the ducks will poison the pond, but you can do it in the group too. I take my best people one-on-one -on -one first and then just say, hey, here's what we're doing. You want to go with me? Cool, let's get in line. You don't, I, I have no problem. I appreciate, respect you, but you're going to have to go somewhere else because this is what we're doing and I only have so much time and money. We're going to go here. Does that make sense? Tatiana, do you know what that here is? I I have not thought about niching myself, uh, but that's a good idea, great idea. You, you know, I'm from Russia, and uh, right now it's a lot of uh, Ukrainians coming in to, to Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I'm helping a lot because we speak the same language. And um, but those people really need uh, like real estate support uh, agent, but they don't have money, really. Yeah, but um, immigrants, man, they're so smart. They're so resourceful. 
Yeah. You know, and- the odds of an immigrant becoming a millionaire here is like 10 times higher than a person who was born here. So yes. they have a lot of drive. Now, I, I have met some immigrants that don't. I don't know why, but they don't have any drive. I've, I've talked to mm-hmm. a couple of people. It shocks me, but most of them do. So your job, that's a qualifying on the customer, but that could be a niche. Yes. I don't know what the numbers are. You have to look at the volume. Yeah. But you could have a niche of, hey, we are a Russian speaking brokerage. We yeah. can help you if you're Russian or speak it from another one of these countries like Ukraine mm-hmm. or wherever. Yeah. You say, we can get you going down this track. Now, mm-hmm. just like any other buyer and seller, they got to qualify, right? They got to have yeah. the income expense, whatever. And if they don't, you can say, hey, look, to get you on track, these are the three things you got to do. When you get those three things done, come back and talk to me. I'd love to help you. And you talk yeah. to them in your language. In fact, <laughs> you're literally talking to them in their language. You are going to attract Russian speakers. That could be, if it's a big enough group in your area, that could be a massive Beautiful niche. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Do you have another niche you want to talk about? No. Okay. Has That's this all good. been helpful? Yes, yep. it was uh, wonderful. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Super uh, helpful. I have, to, I have to get going and I want to leave, but I just realized I, I wrote I wrote it in the chat, but I just realized I directed it to Corey only. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh oh. Well, Corey, you got it. You Wait got a minute. Oh, <laughs> look forward to hearing. Uh, yeah. No, she, you, what, Nadja, you want me to say what it is? I, it's, uh, it's, I, it's okay. I just said I really appreciate the call oh. of everyone here. I, it's really nice to meet everyone. It was, it's great, but I really do have to go. I'm running out of yeah, time. We have to go to it. went way <laughs> over my expectations, but I hope it was helpful. I want it to be. It's wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Very helpful. Very helpful and very needed. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you're you welcome. So Thank Be you, sure everyone. To lean on, on one another and Thank the other everyone. people in the group as you're moving forward uh, and get some inspiration out of them and help them, and they'll help you, and you guys can all move forward together. Thank you so Thank much. You. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Take care. Thank you so much for joining the Mastermind. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. See you.